Garden stage. That's my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and, I mean, damn, pause, but like, check this out. I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the, over the Frosted Flakes, you know what I'm saying, before pause was invented, you know what I'm saying? But it's my brother for real. We used to actually wrestle off of the, off of the Frosted Flakes because he used to always get up early with me. And now he's one of the richest stars. Yeah. Two of your favorite artists, Usher and Diddy, share a past that wouldn't please you at all. How about this? Diddy used to take 14-year-old Usher to wild parties. Yeah, you heard that right, 14. When Usher was first signed to Lap Face Records as a young teen, he was given Sean Combs, then known as Pup Daddy, as a mentor. At 14 years old, Usher moved to New York to collaborate with Combs, also known as Diddy, but it wasn't all work. Apparently, Diddy would let Usher attend his extravagant parties to give the singer more of an edge. And reportedly, some other weird things happened. So, what really conspired between these two legendary acts in the early 90s? Let's find out more. We've all heard those rumors of what went on in Sean Diddy Combs' household when Usher Raymond was his teenage protege, but those were just rumors, right? Well, right. We never heard anything from the mouths of the two superstars who spent quite a bit of time together back in the day. Well, that is, until sometime back in 2012. In a live video stream a few years back, Diddy slipped up and admitted he and Usher had slept together, but quickly tried to cover up his slip up with a boondock phrase. Pause. And no hello, Diddy needed a do over. The bad boy Honcho hilariously tried to recover from his pause with an even worse statement about wrestling, with Usher looking all embarrassed by his side. You know what? I'm saying this is my brother for real. We used to actually wrestle off of the Frosted Flakes because he used to always get up earlier than me and now he's one of the richest stars in the world. And I love him, Diddy said. From a very young age, Usher was tapped to become an R&B superstar. In a 2016 interview, he told Howard Stern that he truly learned what it meant to be famous after living with Puff Daddy for a year at the age of 14. I got a chance to see some banks. I went there to see the lifestyle and I saw it, Usher said during his first Stern Show interview. His unique education, dubbed Puffy Flavor Camp, came about after a teenage usher impressed music executive La Reed with his musical abilities. He was then flown to New York to live with Puffy during the heyday of Bad Boy Records in order to experience what it meant to really make it big in music. It was pretty wild. It was crazy, Usher said while rattling off some of the biggest names in hip-hop who were a constant presence at Puffy's house, including Notorious Big, Lil' Kim, Faith Evans, Mary J. Blige, and Craig Mack. I was like the little brother, they called me Baby Boo, Usher said. But Howard wondered if he was given any rules while living with Puffy. After all, he was just a kid. He wasn't disciplinary. He was letting me be a young man, Usher told Howard. While he wasn't in school, he did have a tutor. He also had a per diem, though Usher said he was given just enough money to avoid getting him into too much trouble. When the time came to put out Usher's first album, Puff Daddy acted as his producer. But after the debut didn't do as well commercially as expected, Puffy passed on being a part of Usher's second album, My Way, which went six times platinum in the late 90s. He was always a family member from afar, so I never felt a disconnection, Usher said of Diddy when asked if there was any bad blood between the two. I will always look at him like a brother. But the celebrated R&B crooner avoided revealing some toxic information about his time in Diddy's house. Diddy accidentally revealed that he and Usher used to wake up together. With endless rumors about Diddy's orientation, netizens can't help but think the coming home hitmaker may have abused Usher. That claim was backed by allegations that engulfed the music executive some time back. Diddy Combs has been the recipient of some very serious, strong molestation allegations, as a document on the Smoking Gun website revealed the U.S. federal government was investigating him for allegedly having sex with underage boys in the past, and Usher may be one of his victims. The subject came up during an interrogation of music manager and cocaine kingpin James Rosemond, who was under indictment. This wasn't some small weed dealing. Rosemond unrepentantly shifted large quantities of the deadly narcotic cocaine in America and used some of the proceeds to fund his music company. Rosemond worked with Diddy on different occasions. Federal investigators asked Rosemond about Diddy having sexual relationships with underage boys. The connection was then made that when Diddy was in his late 20s, he and a then 15-year-old Usher used to sleep in the same bed at night. Usher also revealed he and Diddy would attend sexual orgies when Usher was 15, which is a crime in the United States and most nations with laws concerning minors. Rosemond, who is facing life in prison for drug trafficking with allegations being tossed around that he had a hand in homicides due to statements he'd made previously, refused to answer the government's questions on Diddy. Diddy has also been publicly accused of coercing 1990s R&B singer and actor Christopher Williams into performing oral sex on him for a music development deal, which later went wrong. Williams was signed to the late Andre Harrell's Uptown Records, where Diddy worked before forming his label Bad Boy. 
A former employee of the music producer stated she walked in on Christopher Williams and Diddy in his office during the sex act, and he became enraged at her. Williams, who was in a relationship with Stacey Dash, lost the love of his life when Muscled Up Madonna began stalking him in the industry. Madonna got Williams involved in orgies, where he was unwisely having sex with five women at a time, which is mentally, spiritually, and emotionally destructive. All these men Madonna pursued in the industry and got involved in her nastiness and madness ended up mentally and emotionally damaged in every way, struggling to function after being exposed to her insanity, filth, and old world occult debauchery. On his part, Diddy did highly questionable things to become rich and famous engaging in Hollywood cult behavior such as sex with minors and occult packs. Since that time, nothing but death, destruction, and devastation have plagued his circle. After a few years in Diddy's household and the first album out, Usher and Diddy went their separate ways, with the music producer opting not to continue mentoring the Yeah hitmaker. But I'm not saying Puff was wrong. That first album wasn't my most successful, but it launched the career I've enjoyed for 18 years since. It's helped me understand the importance of having a mentor when I'm working with Justin. You have to make music relevant for now. CEO of Latface Records, Ella Reid, revealed that Diddy convinced him to keep the teenage usher on the label when he had contemplated dropping the star. He said, I wanted to drop him. I wanted to be out of business with him. I broke his heart. I broke his mother's heart. It was a very tough period in both our lives. He added, then someone said to me, don't be a fool. Don't sell your stock in Usher. He's still going to be a star. He's everything you thought he was the day you signed him. And that person was Diddy. Another important figure in Usher's artistic development was Michael Jackson. Usher admitted performing Larry Grossman and Buzz Cohen's Gone Too Soon at the King of Pops memorial service following his untimely death in 2009 was one of the most conflicted experiences of his life. He said, That was the hardest yet most gratifying moment of my career. The song summed up what people were feeling as nobody believed Michael had passed. He was such an iconic figure, icons like him live forever. So far in his career, Usher has garnered nine number one songs on the Billboard Hot 100. With his fourth album, Confessions, Usher became the third artist in history to have three songs simultaneously on the Hot 100. The album was a landmark in Usher's career as it sold 1.1 million U.S. copies in its first week, earning Usher the Grammy Award for Best Contemporary R&B Album. Confessions became the second best-selling album of the 2000 decade in the U.S. It has been certified diamond by the RIEA and went on to sell 20 million copies worldwide. His accolades include over 50 appearances on the Billboard Hot 100, making Usher the prince of R&B. Not long ago, Diddy sparked a debate that left Usher bemused. Diddy sparked a spirited debate when he proclaimed R&B is dead in a recent Instagram Live. During an interview with the Sirius XM show, Usher scoffed at the notion the genre was anything but alive and well. You know, when I hear people say stuff like, you know, what happened to R&B or R&B is dead, it's not. You just don't understand the basis of it. As a matter of fact, maybe I need a reminder, an understanding of, of what it is. How can something come out 20 some odd years ago and then all of a sudden have a resurgence in a way that people just want to mean, talk about it, you know, yeah. enjoy it? It's because it's classic. That's superstar. That's R&B. That's what R&B is. Yeah, R&B you... is timeless. It ain't going to go away. When I do hear people, even like Puff saying, you know R&B is dead, he sounds nuts to me. He said, it sounds, it sounds, it sounds crazy. You know, especially knowing he was a pioneer in understanding and beneficiary of it. He continued, you know, the source that is R&B created the breath of life that was breathed into hip hop. It wouldn't be, there would be no hip hop if there were not R&B, so it's blasphemous to hear me say, to hear people say anything, especially hip hop cats, to say anything about R&B. So, did the ugly past finally catch up with the two? Your guess is as good as mine. And that's it from us today. Until next time, bye.